Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use an aeronautical sectional chart. So let's start right now. How's it going? My name is Bob Roberts. I'm an aerospace education officer for the Civil Air Patrol here in Greenville, South Carolina. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to do five things. Number one, you're going to be able to describe the basic layout of a sectional chart. Number two, you will be able to explain and use the sectional chart, legend. And number three, you're going to be able to identify the latitude and longitudinal lines. Number four, you're going to identify the features such as railroads, obstructions, and number five, you'll be able to identify all the information about an airport that is on the sectional. While you're watching this video, I want to hear from you. Please comment down below for what your goals in aviation are. Do you want to be a pilot? Are you already a pilot who just wants a refresher on the sectionals? Or are you a flight simulator who is looking to take your experience to the next level? Stick around to the end of this video because I have an additional tip that's gonna help you with your goal. Let's start by talking about the type of system we use for maps. The sectional map uses what is called a conformal conic projection. Basically, it would be like if you're looking at the Earth from the North Pole and not from the equator like most maps. You would form a cone around the top, and then when you unfold the cone, this would give you the conformal conic projection. The parallel lines that we're touching before, you, when you unrolled it, those are called the standard reference parallels. By utilizing these parallels, we reduce the deviation from the unit scale between the markings within the region of interest. We divide this map up by using latitude and longitude. Latitude travels east and west. Longitude travels north and south. I always try to remember that by thinking how long it would feel if I wanted to walk from the North Pole to the South Pole. This is the grid coordinate system that is laid over the top of the conformal conic projection and allows us to pinpoint with great accuracy any place on the planet and be able to communicate that location to someone else with ease. Now in aviation, we have several maps depending on our goals. Three of the most common are the World Aeronautical Charts, or we call them WACs, the Sectional Charts, and Terminal Area Charts. World Aeronautical Charts take a little bit of a bigger picture. They have a scale of one to one million, or roughly one inch to about every 13.7 nautical miles. We use these charts if we have a faster aircraft or if we're flying higher altitudes, and we don't need the more detailed information presented on the other charts that we're gonna discuss here in just shortly a bit. The World Aeronautical Charts are also great for getting a better feel for the whole flight. Since you can see a larger map on a single map, the next chart is going to be the sectional. It is the chart we are going to focus more on this video. Sectional charts are twice the resolution of the World Aeronautical Chart. Its scale is one to 500,000 or one inch for roughly every 6.9 nautical miles. The sectional charts are the most used charts by pilots who are flying under visual flight rules and they contain the information you would need to navigate by looking out the window and not relying on GPS or the radio navigation. Even if you are flying using GPS or radios, the sectional chart contains a lot of information that is really helpful. Things such as height of obstacles that you need to avoid, or the frequency to talk to air traffic control at the airport, or to other pilots if there is no air traffic control. Before we continue to dive more into the sectional charts, let's talk briefly about terminal area charts. These charts are twice the resolution, again, of the sectional charts. They are at a scale of one to 250,000, or about one inch for every three nine and a half nautical miles, give or take. These help you to be able to get more information in areas that may be congested, areas like New York City, Los Angeles, where there's just too much information in a small area, it'd just be too much clutter. So unlike the world aeronautical charts or sectional charts, the terminal area charts are only created where there is no major aviation traffic. As you can see here, World Aeronautical Charts cover as much larger area than the sectionals. This is why they are so useful for general planning, but not as useful for more detailed planning. Sectionals are named after the major city that is located in that chart. In this example, we are looking at an Atlanta sectional chart. As mentioned earlier, the purple boxes in the map are the location of the terminal area charts. The black arrows at the very top of the map let you know which side of the map is going to show the northern or southern portions of the map. I can't tell you how entertaining it is to watch both new and old pilots constantly flipping the maps over and over. Uh, I am a little fearful that with all the new glass flight planning we have in the cockpits nowadays that uh, we're not going to enjoy the rustling all that paper in the cockpits much longer. But uh, you know, one really important point, especially for those of you that are in a flight simulating, you don't have to purchase these maps or try to beg them off of a pilot friend of yours. You can go to skyvector.com and see and print these charts. Unlike the printed versions, you can change the zoom in and out with just the scroll of a mouse wheel. It's an incredible resource and one you should take advantage of. Now, when flying, I think we can all agree that it's really important to know if you're going to be flying into a mountain or not. We can plan for that on the sectionals by looking at the contour levels. 
They are on the maps and show sea level as green and go up to the shades of gold. We don't use blue for sea level because blue actually signifies water. Guess that's yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Um, so one important tip here, especially for Civil Air Patrol cadets, is that the contour intervals used to be placed on the front of the old sectionals. It is now included with the index on the inside. You may see an old test where it still references it on the front, and that's why just looking at the sectional, and you can see that it does a lot more than just show you where the airports are. It shows you items like where the towns are, the railways, power lines, windmills, and other items that you can use for checkpoints when you're flying. You can fly to any place just by using one of these maps and looking out the window. You don't need GPS, you don't need radio navigation. When the skies are blue, you can just look out the window. Uh, flying by looking out the window, frankly, is called pilotage, and it's absolutely my favorite way to fly. Uh, when I flew my kids when they were little, I would usually point to something out the window and ask them to take us there. Um, they didn't know it, but even at a young age, they were using pilotage. So now for an example, let's take a closer look at Wichita. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find some of those items. Small towns that will be in yellow, some windmills, some student flight training areas that as a pilot traveling through the area you might want to fly higher or just be on the lookout for a higher concentration of aircraft that are changing direction quickly. There are a bunch of railroads which are indicated with the line with the little tick marks. The same mark is also used for electric lines but those lines will actually say electric on top of the line. We can see some other private airports that if you had an emergency, you might be able to use. Or if you contact the owner, you might be able to use as well. So at the very least, you can use the private airports as visual aids to know where you are and where your location is. Now let's take a closer look now at how we can gather the airport information from the chart. For this, let's examine Hutchinson, Wichita. We can see that the airport is named Hutchinson Regional. Its IATA, or the International Air Transport Association code, is HUT. We can see that it is at an altitude of 1,543 feet above sea level. Its longest runway is approximately 7,000 feet. The airport is printed in blue, so it has an operating control tower. If the control tower is only operational for certain hours, the hours will be stated on the sectional on the legend to the side. The star on the top of the graphic tells us that the airport has an operating lake beacon that can be used to help us see and identify the airport at night. The control tower's primary frequency on this chart is 118.5. When the control tower is not in service, the common traffic frequency used by the pilots using the airport is 122.95. The Automatic Terminal Information Service, or what we refer to as ATIS, gives us the weather at the airport and some basic information such as what runways they are using and if there is any problems at the airport. We need to be aware of when we're arriving or departing. So we listen to this before we're talking to air traffic control, just so that they don't have to waste their time on the radio telling all the pilots the same information over and over again. The airport appears to have three runways, and we can tell their rough orientation of those runways just by the picture. Now just think about how much all this information there was and how useful it can be, yet they only use a really tiny space on that chart to tell all of it. So it's important to remember that controlled airports are in blue, and uncontrolled airports are magenta. For a little practice, take a look at this piece of a sectional, specifically the following four airports, Westport, Jabara, McMaster, and Augusta. Are these airports controlled or not controlled? How do you know? Which one of these four airports does not have a rotating beacon? Lastly, do they have fuel at the airport? Feel free to pause the video and see if you can answer those questions and to review these important terms if you're studying for a CAP Aerospace Dimensions module. Okay, now, here's my tip. Take a look at the sectional for your local area. Launch your favorite flight sim or reach out to your local flight school and ask them if they have an introductory flight. These flights are usually cheaper than the normal prices for lessons. Map out a few items you think are interesting from the sectional chart and see if you can find them in real life. As you get more experienced, try and not use that GPS direct button and try to fly cross country using only visual aids you will really get a better sense and appreciation for being a pilot and not get confused when your GPS guided autopilot doesn't do what you thought it was going to do and all of a sudden you have to figure out where you are. In an upcoming video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use an E6B flight computer and mapping out a flight plan. If you would like to see more of these aerospace and flight educational videos, you can simply hit subscribe and the bell icon and YouTube will let you know when I release a new weekly video every Friday. Till then, if this video was useful, please hit the like button and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much.